what was the poll question, McLovin? Who would you bet a week's pay will not make oh, the NFL oh, playoffs? Okay. But we need some help narrowing down the teams. Now, we lifted this from Mike Florio, because Mike uh, has the show prior to this one on the NBC Sports Network. In fact, let's bring in Mike. Mike, we did. We sampled from your show, without permission, by the way. But um, thanks for joining us. What was the answer that you were getting from your audience? The permission is implied. Anything you want to sample, anything you want to borrow, anything you just want to take, you are more than welcome to anything I have because I don't have much. Um, I, I t- my own thought is the Browns are the number one team that has no chance to make it to the playoffs this year because, number one, the division they play in, and number two, I don't think they want to make it to the playoffs this year. I think they're building for 2017 and beyond, and I think the 49ers as well. But, you know, we had a broad range. I, somebody suggested Broncos. To say the Broncos have no chance to make it to the playoffs, I think, is oh, wow. maybe wishful thinking by Raiders fans. I, I think they, they have a chance. There aren't many teams that you can look at and say, you have no chance of making it. And I think the Browns in the AFC and the 49ers in the NFC are the two that would be the closest to saying you have no chance this year. Thank you for playing. Thank you for being the opponents for the other teams. They need to play somebody, but you're not going to be in the postseason this year. Give me the team or teams that you think make that big leap. It feels like there's a quantum leap taken by at least two teams every year. Yeah, and the problem is we get on those teams, right? Well, oh, the Jaguars. Right? The Jaguars are the first team we think about this year. Oh, the Jaguars. Oh, they're going to be so much better. Blake Bortles coming into year three. He was second in the NFL in touchdown passes last year. And he's got Allen Robinson and Allen Hearns. And they have all these defensive players, these young guys like Dante Fowler and Miles Jack. I, I, want to, I want to see it before I buy it because I feel like there's too much. You know, I look at the Jaguars and the Titans, and I say, a ton of buzz about the Jaguars, no buzz about the Titans. Wouldn't I rather be the Titans? Wouldn't I rather be the team that nobody expects anything from? Look at the Saints in the NFC South. They have one of the best quarterbacks in the history of football in Drew Brees. And nobody is saying the Saints are going to make it to the playoffs. They have one of the roughest training camps they've ever had. James Laurinaitis, who joined the team this year from the Rams, said it was the, the, the most physical training camp he's seen since the new CBA was put in place. You know, the, 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 so the real surprises are the teams that we aren't trying to flag. So a team like the Titans and the Saints, that would really be a surprise because we're not saying, hey, look at them. We're saying, look at the, hey, watch out for the Jaguars, watch out for the Buccaneers, watch out for this team, and how often do those teams actually pan out? Not Mike, real often. Mike Flory will join us, uh, of course, profootballtalk.com, and uh, 7 to 9 Eastern on the NBC Sports Network every morning. Uh, back to the Browns. Josh Gordon, are the Browns shopping him or teams just inquiring about Josh Gordon? Well, you know, I love nothing more than a little ESPN on ESPN crime, Dan. And as it turns out, there was a report yesterday from ESPN that teams were calling. And then ESPN Cleveland reported today that the Browns leaked that to ESPN to generate interest. Oh, no. <laughs> so the dog is chasing its tail, and, and uh, ESPN is riding the dog while it does so. So uh, who, who knows? But, look, the Browns have trusted this guy multiple times, and every time they trust him, he ends up suspended again. And if they truly are building for the future – then trade him, get what you can for him, get some draft picks for next year, and lay the foundation to make your team better in 2017. Because I don't think you can reliably say, hey, we're definitely going to have Josh Gordon in 2017 and 2018, because every time they think they have him, he gets suspended again. Al Jazeera report with Peyton Manning is where it started back in January, and people dismissed it because it was Al Jazeera, and of course Peyton Manning would never use HGH. Uh, and then all of a sudden there are other names attached to it. There are other sports attached to this. If this is a different news outlet, are we taking it, are we looking at it differently than what we have been? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Because that was part of the initial dismissal of the report. Remember Mike Ditka, when he was on ESPN, uh, it's, it's disreputable. Uh, you know, they, they don't listen to anything they have to say. Well, uh, okay, uh, fine, but, you know, it's out there, and... Now we've got to deal with it. And the NFL at least viewed it as sufficiently credible to investigate. And the thing that gets me, though, Dan, is once you decide that the guy who was recorded without his knowledge from the Geyer Institute in Indianapolis, once you decide he's not credible as to Peyton Manning, why is he credible as to James Harrison, Clay Matthews, Julius Peppers, and Mike Neal? You can't be – this isn't a batting average. You're either credible or you're not. So if you're not credible as to Peyton Manning – why doesn't that close the books on these other interviews? And I personally think, and this, this, isn't, this isn't a report, I believe, after talking to somebody who's in the know but not directly involved in this, that the league made it known to these players, presumably through their agents, just show up, 
Answer the questions, and you'll be fine. We have to do this. We've got all these Patriots fans out here who are going crazy about this <laughs> stuff because of the whole Deflategate thing. We have to at least look like we're investigating. Just come in and talk, and we'll exonerate you the same way that we exonerated Peyton Manning, the same way that baseball exonerated Ryan Howard and Ryan Zimmerman. Yeah, I feel like there, there was no way they were going after Peyton Manning. I mean, there was no benefit for the NFL to go to the mat for Peyton Manning and, and see if he used HGH. These other guys, I get the feeling the same thing, that, hey, we didn't go in on Peyton. Look, it makes us look like we're doing our job and we're investigating you, you know, even though Al Jazeera is not even in business any longer. I, I just, I, I was just, I assume that they said, if, if we get you guys in, we're going to have you come in. This is why we're going to have you come in. Then come in, and then we'll, we'll let you go and, and go play games. It just, but here's the problem, you know. and this is why there was a dust-up and a back-and-forth, and it took weeks to get to the point where these guys are going to be interviewed. It's hard for the players and the Players Association to trust the NFL in a situation like this because we've seen multiple occasions where the league office reaches a conclusion before the investigation – Here's what we conclude, and the investigation is about working backward to find the evidence that they can use to, to cram into the box that they've already checked as guilty. That's exactly what happened, I believe, in Deflategate. They came to the conclusion the Patriots were cheating, and all the money that was spent on Ted Wells wasn't about doing a true, objective, unbiased investigation. It was about finding evidence that would support the conclusion that they made the moment that they were measuring the PSI and the footballs at halftime of the AFC Championship game. So when you have that fear, you know, because, oh, go and tell the truth. What do you have to hide? Well, I've got nothing to hide, but how do I know they're not going to take what I say and twist it and warp it, and the next thing you know, I'm guilty of something I didn't do. So I think that's why there was a fight. I think that's why it, it got to the point where the players had to ask themselves, do we want to risk being suspended for not cooperating? And now I think the hope is that they will just say, okay, yeah, nothing to see here. There's nothing to this report. These guys are exonerated, and everybody can move on. Yeah, I don't blame these guys. I wouldn't trust the NFL. What happens if they say, hey, we want you to turn over your phones because we want to see if there's any correspondence here? Oh, that's the concern. That's one of the concerns that the union had. Okay, fine. We'll go in and meet, and we'll deny everything, and then the next request is we want your phones. And they, they got a lot of stuff from Peyton Manning, but it's my understanding they didn't ask for and therefore didn't receive his phone. But that, that, that's a big part of this. What's the next request? Are you just going to meet with us and exonerate us, or are we going to have to produce phones? Are we going to have to do this? Are we going to have to do that? When does this all end? And what evidence do you have, if any, beyond the guy who, number one, recanted his testimony, although I don't put a whole lot of stock into that. I think he was pressured into recanting. But number two, we've already decided that he's not telling the truth as to Peyton Manning. Why are you relying upon this guy as to the other four players? Okay, but why would the guy from the Geyer Institute recant what he said? Well, well Who I mean, pressured because, him? look, you're saying inflammatory things that are secret and confidential, and you're giving away stuff about clients, and if you aspire to have a career in that business, you're not going to have much of a career if you're out there talking to people about all the people that are using PEDs. So I think that was one of the big reasons why. And there was a, a very lengthy report in the Washington Post about the steps that were taken by the Peyton Manning PR machine and legal machine. And I, I think that, that based on that report from the Washington Post, I could see why the kid would say, I'm not messing with this. I'm just going to re- – I recant everything. Well, well what, what are you recanting? I don't know. I recant everything. <laughs> Whatever I said, I didn't say. You know who I blame? Who? Papa John. <laughs> why? I'll bet he probably put some pressure on this guy. Ah, they sent Papa J. They, just, they sent him with a bunch of gift cards for Papa John. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yep, paid him off. Uh, the Tim Tebow whirlwind tour for baseball. Uh, we know he has a strong arm. Um, is, is this a real story here? Well, it's a story because ESPN wants it to be a story, and whoever else is pulling the strings and whatever the end game is. I don't know what the end game is. Maybe it's just Tim Tebow selling a bunch of baseballs and bats that he's signing for 125 and 175 dollars a pop respectively. But I feel like this has all been engineered and orchestrated and it just doesn't feel real to me. And it's funny, every story I see about this, Dan, there's the perfunctory paragraph about Tim Tebow hitting 424 as a senior in high school. Who cares? I mean, anybody who's any good hits 500 at a minimum. Yeah. In, in high school baseball, oh, he hit 424, and he hasn't played since 2005. And, and I, you know, people say, oh, how dare you 
chastise someone who's pursuing his dreams. Hey, look, it's one thing to pursue your dream brick by brick, piece by piece, climbing the mountain. I feel like he wants to be airlifted to the top of the mountain. And I, I, that's, I think at a certain level disrespectful to all the guys who are out there, triple A, double A, single A, riding on beating down buses and staying in flea bag motels and eating crappy food and doing all the stuff. And all of them have more talent than he does. So I, I don't know what this is. I've been calling it a one-man fantasy camp. I think that's what it's going to be next Tuesday. I don't think anybody's going to sign him unless somebody's looking to sell some tickets and some jerseys in the month of September. Is the mothership going to carry this live, Mike? Well, you know, that's a good question. It's, it's closed to the public because, God forbid, anybody would want free autographs when you're selling them for 125 and 175 a pop on, on baseballs and bats. But, uh, <laughs> oh, I have a feeling there'll be a camera there, and I have a feeling that if you tune into the mothership next Tuesday, you'll see something. You'll see something. We've seen a lot of him swinging a bat. We never see where the ball goes, but we see a lot of him swinging a bat. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. He shouldn't be that salty about it. He's trying to pursue his dream, man. He's just a, he's just a humble kid from Jacksonville trying to, trying to follow his dream. Of course he is. And that'll be the Disney movie that we get. Maybe that's the Will idea. there be a Tebow Disney movie, Mike, within the maybe next... Maybe that's what this is all about, Dan. Maybe, they, maybe the, the script is like five pages light. We need something more here. What can we do here? Hey, how about he goes and plays baseball? Okay, let's do that. Maybe that's because, hey, who owns ESPN? Disney. But we can't make this a 30 for 30. It's much larger than that. This... Oh, no, there's, there's still much more money to be made. Oh, Because, listen, and, and this is why I get myself into trouble every time I, I criticize or even remotely, indirectly <laughs> scrutinize Tim Tebow. There are millions of people out there that love the guy. Of course. That think he got robbed by the NFL. That think he'd still be a a playoff caliber quarterback in the NFL if the teams would give him a chance. It's, it's crazy how rabid some people are about Not some people, a lot of people are about him. But you could have him performing circumcisions in a... <laughs> remember when he did that? Like he yeah. was on a, on a uh, religious mission with his dad? And I mean, there's, this is a movie. Hey, it's, uh, maybe it's a trilogy. Oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is the equivalent of Return of the King, Right. Tim Tebow's baseball career. Maybe you do college as the opening movie, mm. pro as the, the middle spot, and then his baseball career is the third act. And then you make, what, a couple billion dollars and everybody's happy. Thank you, Mike. Except me. <laughs> I'll see you. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.